This week's INMPI is from ST. Lydia, what is this week's new product introduction? That's right, ST Micro. This is an interesting new sensor. Um, this is an accelerometer, it's the AIS 25BA. I want to also mention that this is the automotive version of the List 25BA. So there's, there's two versions, they work pretty much the same. Um, and these are accelerometers um, that you configure them with I squared C, but the data comes out um, via TDM. And they're designed to be low noise, high bandwidth. Um, they're triple access. And um, yeah, it's interesting. Like they basically go up to like, you know, basically 4G max. And instead of getting data the way you normally would with an accelerometer, where you, um, you, know, you basically query it over I squared C or SPI and, and you get the data that way, or like maybe it's analog, um, the data is streamed out for you automatically over you know a, a high speed TDM interface where you you know you can clock it at multiple kilohertz um, and it's designed to go into an audio subsystem which is which is like I was like what's up with that like why would such a thing uh, be useful and this is the um, uh, the the data sheet uh, so this one again the this is the AIS version it's designed for use in automotive. Um, it's got ultra no low noise density it's a 1.8 volt uh, uh, interface, by the way, which isn't a big deal, but just um, FYI. And uh, it's designed to have um, ultra low frequency response at, from DC to 2.4 kilohertz. So 2.4 kilohertz is kind of like the cutoff where they're expecting you to um, stream data out of. You control it over I squared C, and then of course you get, like I said, TDM output 8 to 24 kilohertz. Um, it's time division, that's TDM stands for time division multiplex. So you're going to get the X, Y, Z. Um, and other data out. So again, what is this useful for? So this is inter kind of interesting. Um, so the idea behind this is that you would use this for noise reduction and noise cancellation for um, recording because, you know, usually you record with a microphone, right? A microphone takes audio waves uh, going through the air and it flexes a uh, thin, you know, piezo element or a MEMS element converts it into a capacitive or current or voltage measurement, and that's how you get audio out. Um, the problem is, is that, you know, and, and just uh, we're doing the show, and so, you know, this is something we deal with. It's really hard to get only the, no the, the audio you want without the background noise you don't want. It's, it's like there's a lot of work involved in it. And especially if you're doing automotive, right? We mentioned this is the automotive version. If you're in a car, cars are extremely loud, and you're trying to maybe use a, uh, you know, a voice assistant or you're talking on the phone, um, you're fighting all this background noise. And what's interesting uh, about this idea that ST, I don't know if they invented it or, or they just you know, have products for it, but you use the accelerometer to do uh, the vibration detection for the low, the DC zero to again, about two kilohertz vibrations. Um, and you use that instead of the microphone. And so you don't end up getting um, the acoustic noise uh, and you cancel it out and if there is noise that comes in from the low frequencies due to vibration, you can either add it or remove it or perform some sort of filtering um, so that you can uh, you, you don't get that, uh, especially in the, the, those low frequencies is where you're getting a lot of acoustic noises um, and microphones usually are not as responsive. Um, so yeah, so the idea here is that you, know, you still need a microphone, this is not a, a microphone, but because it's TDM out, you know, you can basically shove it directly into your codec, um, your DSP, your chip, your microcontroller, your microcomputer, um, perform some basic filtering on it, either like low pass or high pass add or addition, and um, use that to get better audio output. And we have a video that we'll show at the end that actually, it, it shows, you know, how nice the waveform looks when you remove the, um, the, the audible noise that you would not get through the vibration detection of the list or the AIS 25. Um, so the chip is, uh, you know, the kind of the standard uh, 16 list style uh, GPIO, but again, um, they don't have SPI. Instead, they have TDM output uh, or input. You know, you, you put in the bit clock and the M clock um, for the, sorry, the, yeah, the word clock and the M clock and the the master clock and the B for the bit clock. Um, you control over I squared C what data you want out and 
uh, the formatting. Uh, it comes out as 16-bit TDM, I think up to eight channels. I think maybe, yeah, here it shows you. Uh, you can decide, um, you know, which, which frequency range you want. Uh, you can set cutoffs, you can, you know, do oversampling, whatever. Um, you can get uh, the ODR data XYZ. It comes out as TDM, and then your your codec is going to have to take that and then do something with it. But usually, once you get it, like if you have a powerful enough microcontroller or my computer, once you get the data in in this like I2S like format, um, it's very easy for you to perform audio calculations on it. Just mentioning that the accelerometer is just accelerometer; it doesn't do the math for you. But it just gets you the data in the format that you can then perform uh, math on. Um, so yeah, you can, sorry, there's six, sorry, there's eight slots, I think. I'm trying to remember, maybe there's six slots. You can decide uh, which ones you want um, on what axis. And then, you know, again, they have some example code for, uh, I think, a STM microcontroller, you know, if you, you download it um, for their dev board. But uh, honestly, I would probably plug this into something like a Raspberry Pi computer, or something that can uh, really do the, um, the analysis for you and, and do the uh, filter cutoffs. For the I squared C control side, um, you know, they do have a driver. This is kind of a generic C driver. It's not an Arduino ease, but uh, you could port it to, you know, whatever Linux, STM32, Cube, or whatever microcontroller you're using, um, and then pipe that TDM data into your microcontroller, uh, sorry, into your uh, microcomputer or your DSP. And the best part is, it's in stock. Available at DigiKey. Yay. That's right. It's in stock. There's 490 at the time of this this printing. Yes, there's <laughs> no eval boards right now. I would have picked up an eval board and I'd try it out. But um, do check out also, again, the list 25, which is the non-automotive version. Um, I think the thing that we, first off, this is interesting because I'd never seen Accelerometer with TDM output. And I was like, why would you do that? Um, but then once I, I saw the demo and I read about it, I was like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. It's definitely, you know, as we're seeing, you know, we've talked a lot about AI and audio interfaces. You know, one thing that I've noticed is a lot of companies are trying to get away from having mechanical button and knob interfaces and go with audio interfaces because they're upgradable, they're programmable, they don't get dirty, they don't get loose. Um, you don't have to worry about yeah. people looking, you know, you can just speak to your car and say, you know, do X, Y, Z. The problem is, is that you are, if an audio, if an audio assistant isn't 99% accurate, it's incredibly annoying. Like they have yeah. to be so good or it's very frustrating for people. And, it, and it's even not possible because there's humans involved. So yeah. um, I saw that the studies that have come out that it's uh, it's a better UI for many things to have physical knobs. Yeah. So I think it's like the middle path is the way, once again, like some stuff makes sense for probably voice control, but some stuff should probably also have a tactical knob. Probably can do a little bit of both. Yeah. yeah. That said, uh, you know, and this was definitely, I can, I can sort of tell, like this was designed for some car company that they were like, we want audio interface, but we want to do the noise cancellation from the vibration. Because it's just yeah. like you're driving on a highway and it's just like, Err. so, um, but I think it's gonna be very useful for other, you know, anyone using um, recording or voice, especially with, um, uh, or doing, uh, actually another interesting use case for this would be, if you wanted to do like predictive maintenance type projects where it's like you have yeah. a device that's vibrating, um, like a compressor, like it's a common thing, yeah. the compressor, it's like when it starts, it starts making a weird noise, right? But yeah. then how do you determine what that weird noise is and how do you get the audio yeah, you in? you sample and then you can, yeah. Using the vibration could be nice because then you won't, you won't be affected, that it won't be affected by outside acoustic noise. Yeah. So then there's a couple of cases. I like the idea of like it streams in as audio. Um, comes in as three, you know, three to nine channels, and, and you tweak it. Yeah, that one of the way. elevators I take. Anytime it's about to break down, it always sounds different. Yeah, that, that would probably be a good use for it. It's interesting that you know, it's we forget that accelerometers and audio are actually measuring the same thing. Yeah. Uh, just one does a surface when one does it in the air. Anyways, uh, we got sorry, a video. we had to distract. But uh, check out this very cool uh, demo, which I, I like that they had Audacity, so you can really see the effects of the uh, L uh, LIS 25. Recorded by the accelerometer, and the audio is recorded by the onboard microphone. In this PC GUI, 
you see the individual part of each of the sensors, which is uh, the microphone on the top, you see in time and frequency, and then the accelerometer in time and frequency. What we are going to do in order to deploy this system is uh, we are going to take the lower portion of the spectrum up to 2 kilohertz from the accelerometer and the higher portion of the spectrum from the microphone, as you can see in, in these two uh, diagrams. We are going to combine them into a single audio signal where the gain, uh, acoustic gains of the two sensors have been equalized uh, and recombine them into the output that gets generated uh, as output of the, of the system. So now let's try to record the audio coming from the demo. So we turn on this recording system where we see two channels actually. One represents the audio as recorded by the single microphone. Another one represents the audio recorded by a combination of microphone and accelerometer. So let's try to listen to each one of these recordings in order to understand the improvement in quality. I'm going to split the two signals into individual tracks so that we can listen back to them. Now, if I turn on uh, this bottom track and I play it back from the loudspeaker, you can hear a very disturbed audio that represents what you would get uh, using just a microphone with no further processing. If we listen to the other track, uh, we can hear the output of the actual system which is clear voice with none of the noise you were, you were hearing previously.